All right, so welcome to Off the Shelf. Uh, we're still doing our March kind of festivities here with uh, St. Patrick's Day and everything Irish. So I'm your host, Miss Victoria. My co-host, as usual, is going to be here with Hello. me. Hello. Everybody, yes. Mm-hmm. Our other co-host is Robin sometimes, but they alternate. We take turns on that. Our topic today is going to be Irish food and drinks. So there's a lot of books that are going to be dealing fictional ones, and of course there's going to be some non-fiction ones also. Just so you can have that in mind. Okay, our first one, and I love, this is one of my favorite chefs. I love her character. She's top chef, hilarious. You might know her from a Spring Baking Championship as one of the judges. I, um, I think she's but done I the Christmas I don't know. Her name is Carla Hall. Very hilarious. If you don't know her, Avian, I saw you shaking here like you didn't know. Yeah, I know. I've never seen her. I've seen this book, though. Okay. Well, at least you've seen the book. Um, you need to look her up and, of course, check out Facebook, uh, Facebook or YouTube and type up her name. Uh, she is on the Chew, which is like a version of the kitchen, I guess you could oh, say. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yeah, she's hilarious. I like her. This is her it's called Comfort Foods. So as you can see, it's favorite dishes from around the world. And in there, there is like an Irish stew and I think something else dealing with Ireland. So Irish. So she does have some recipes. And of course, she has recipes from other countries as well. So this is a bonus one for if anybody wants to, if you know her, you want to get to know her. Um, you might have watched Top Chef on Bravo. Uh, so she is one of the all stars, like it shows right there. This is a good one for you to try out if you need and want to know her. Some people know um, the one from the kitchen. Can't think of her name right now. To be honest, it's just drawing a blank right now. Not Sunny Anderson, but she's another one. Um, oh, I don't remember her name. I can't I, I know, remember I can't, her name. But let's go ahead and see what else I came up with dealing with Irish food. Well, anything in Ireland or anything Irish, uh, what you're going to come up with is also is bread. Um, this is, this is a good book. I read this one. Irish soda bread, uh, sourdough breads. Um, so this one is deals with the local breads that you get me from other um, countries. So And they call it artisan bakers because they do specifically designs on them. You can see little cuts, different cuts they do on the bread. So when it bakes, it makes that design. Um, yeah. So it's something different. So if you want to try something, if you're good at bread, I would go for it. If you're not, you might want to try the basic one. But this is a good this one, one to try out. Just in case. Yeah, this one's cool. You like this, this one? one? Like, yeah, this one, I, I read it when it came in. And it shows you how to make the designs on the bread. And I mean, hopefully, if you make it right, you'll get the designs. If you don't, it'll just look like a blob. But Yeah. You know. I think it's almost like the coffees that they do at Starbucks when they do the designs on the top. Oh, like, yeah. It's yeah if you mess that up, I think it's pretty similar. Um, yeah. But at least this one, and just like the coffee, I'm just going to drink it. I'm just going to eat the bread. Even if it's not I'm going still eat the bread. And then you can see how they put very rustic. Uh, there's no seasoning, there's no dry on top. Uh, it's just the, dough, the flour on top of the bread. So this is another good one. So we got food so far. So let's see if I was able to find anything dealing with the drinks. No, we're still on food. One more food. Uh, Pie Academy, because another big thing when it comes to Ireland and one of the stuff they do a lot is pie. And I don't blame them because I like pie. Pie is good. I mean, it looks good. And the, it's an art, just like the bread. Um, now they're doing... Um, kind of artistic uh, pies, like the crust on top, <laughs> they can actually make the crust look like um, a Star Wars character, the dragons from Game of Thrones, a uh, Harry Potter scene. Um, they can, you can do a lot of things with the crust. Uh, you just have to cut it. You have to think about that. It's going to expand. So at yeah. uh, the same time, they, they make all these, I think they, I don't know if they've done a Monet or like an actual painting from somebody else and they made it on um, using pie crust see it takes so much time but like it's worth it i guess it looks beautiful in the end it does it, it really does it is it is worth the work the time that you put into mm-hmm. it um of course you know you want to look at it and savor it and then you're like okay there's that one person who's like all right so let's get to cutting it that probably would be me but still 
if you want to, this is a great one. He, he also has, uh, is it, the fillings is not just fruit. You know, you can do your nuts, like your pecan pie and different types. You could do your so creams, good. custard, ice cream. I've heard of ice, ice cream, cream cake, but I never heard of ice cream pie. Maybe ice cream with the pie. Yeah, like on top. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'd have to check this out unless you you all check it out before me. I think uh, yeah, it's in the it's in the new section. It's literally it's still it's still there. It's there right now. I know it's there. I was looking at the cookbooks. So, oh, see, I there. might catch it before y'all. You never know. You should look at it. It's cool. <laughs> now remember, as always, these four that I'm showing all of you are ones that you can find at the Garcia Library because we do own a copy that you can check out or place on hold and of course pick up either inside or pick it up curbside. Just make sure you always call us to find out our curbside hours. All right, last one, which is honestly my favorite because obviously I love everything food-wise. Uh, I do not have an Instant Pot, but just the food alone right there, it reminds me of a nice Irish stew, which typically they use like maybe lamb, uh, but they might do uh, beef and of course here's chicken. Yeah, and of like course chicken, it's like potatoes. Just stick it in the pot, I'm assuming. Yeah, so the Instant Pot, like, you could just throw stuff in there and then turn it on and just let it sit. I Super I've easy. You don't have to, like, pot, stir it. I think Instant Pot, if I'm correct, Avian, is an Instant Pot, like, faster than using a crock pot? Yeah, it's like a pressure cooker, kind of. So the you don't have to, like, stir. You really don't have to do anything. It will cook your food for you. So that's the appeal. Hmm. I guess that's for people who are not really good at cooking, yeah, or like if you're oh, busy and you know, yeah, there, press the button and throw it in there. It looks so good, though. I mean, it that does look good. I'm just gonna say, and it's apparently authorized by the brand Instapot. So, well, those of you who have Instapot uh, and are planning on getting one, you might want to grab this cookbook uh, to give you some, some additional recipes to use. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our online digital resources. So first we're gonna talk about our Hoopla ones. And then of course we're also gonna, if I was able to find any, will be Access 360. So let's see Hoopla first. All right, this is where we get the Irish drinks. All right. Apparently didn't find any physical books. <laughs> we had a pretty electronic. Now, first one, I had to put it on there. And of course I had to put it again as the, the third one. You gotta have, when you're talking about Ireland, St. Patrick's Day, and you're doing drinks, you got to talk about Guinness. Um, that is a primary drink uh, when it comes to beer um, over there in Ireland. Uh, you have the Tony Corrin, you get the brewery, the history, the people, and the beer. Uh, you can do Guinness poured here in America. However, to be established as a Guinness pour, like certified, because they actually have to be certified to pour Guinness uh, you can go to the Guinness factory in Ireland and they have the classes and they will show you the proper way to pour a Guinness. And I it, there is a special technique because if not, it does bubble and fizz a little too much. You want to pour it at just the right angle so that you get that at the top of the beer. It's called a head. You want that head to be perfect. And of course, you need to let it set for a good. It's not like when they give it to you, you drink right away. With Guinness, you have to let it set for a little while, and then you drink. It. It's a whole process, and people don't realize it. It's like and a it has good like a pub beer taste to it. Um, the I third know, one, I know Arthur that they made it. The Life and Times of the Brewing Legend Arthur Guinness. That's where Guinness obviously began mm -hmm. from him. Those are two great ones if you want a history buff type of people, and you want a little bit Nova Ireland. Main history dealing with the drinks, which will be Guinness. It'd be great uh, if you go to Ireland and you do go to a pub, not a bar, they're called pubs. Uh, if you go to a pub, do not order an American beer like Bud Light or Budweiser. They don't like, you're obviously you're pinpointing yourself obviously as a tourist because the only beer they know is Guinness. <laughs> so... I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, I think you'll stick out if you order something else. If you want to be part of the locals, you might want to choose Guinness. Uh, we do have two other cookbooks I had. Obviously, Iris Pub Cookbook. You got to throw in that pub food. Yeah. It looks delicious. I don't know, right? Yeah, pub, pub food is good. It's like comfort food that pairs really well with beer. 
Exactly. You want something nice and comfortable. Look at that hearty stew right there. Yeah, that looks good. That piece of bread. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have the nice background. I mean, that's just pretty. <laughs> right. I feel like we have to go all out for this book. Yeah, I'm pretty much. Uh, the other one, you have your Irish food. You have food from the old country. Uh, a lot of Irish food typically is going to be in one of your rustic, um, or what people would say is poor man's food. Yeah, very rustic and simplistic. Uh, of course, uh, now, uh, now I think in Ireland they're having a, a new trend of like those uh, fancy, um, um, not micro or macro cooking wise, uh, where they have like the little foods and it's like, it's not like the big old bowl of stew. It's more fine dining, I guess you could say. They're almost, there's a few Michelin star. Most people know what that means. There's a few of those restaurants over there. But they're slowly trying to get higher than what people typically uh, put Ireland as a year rustic. They're trying to elevate their, their food scene as well. All right, so let's see. Oh, I did find some in Axis 360. I'm really surprised. Oh. Yeah, we do have the needed. We gotta have a bread recipe. More, more. bread. Uh, I don't know about you, but I like the second one. Yeah, I see the cheese, and I'm instantly entranced. <laughs> is that cheese on potatoes? Uh, I see the noodles. That looks like that might be a really uh, like a bake. Uh, yeah, I it's can't tell. ultimate <laughs> casserole cookbook. Um, oh, okay. That's casserole. what you want—a hearty rustic. That's home that cooking. so good. Yeah, I know. We're all hungry right now. At this point, I'm, I'm probably going to go make a casserole when I get home. Next one, you have great shellfish cooking because a lot of things in Ireland, they, I mean, literally it's an island. Uh, yeah. So they're going to have some good fish. fish. That'd be a big thing. So if you're not a seafood person, don't worry, skip over back to the bacon bubbly or you can skip over to the next one, which is soups and stews which they are known for if you're not a shellfish uh, seafood type of person, you might want to stick to the other two and uh, check those out, of course, online or put it as, mark it as your favorite so you can check those out later. Now, as always, make sure to remind, just want to remind you all, I know Amy will help as well, uh, visit the Facebook and YouTube channel, which is Corpus Christi Public Libraries. If you haven't already, please like our Facebook page and, of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can find all the videos, all the branches are doing. If you want to break down, go down further right there, which is our website. Our address is the cctexas.com slash library. You can get a breakdown of all the videos as well as helping finding books online. Or you can call that number and Avian, for example, will answer. I will answer and I will help you. <laughs> and she will try to help you find the books. Of course, you can use a new book alert, Arthur Check and Book Newsletter, but if you want to actually talk to a person, our means give us a call and we can help you with that. Last thing is just a pretty much the longer version of the URL address for the online programming. I want to thank you once again for watching. Our next one that we're going to be discussing will be uh, folk tales that deal with Ireland. And of course, they had a lot of many folk tales dealing with the Fae as well. Uh, so we will discuss that in our next time. And we will, I'll see you next time. And we'll finish off our March madness of ireland and saint patrick's day yep. off the shelves all right see you next time bye